speaker, researcher, Bible prophecy expert, author, and just an all-around nice guy. Fun guy to talk to. L.A., good to have you back with us, sir. Hey, Jim. The pleasure's all mine. Thank you, sir. Hey, I don't know where to start, but I kind of have an idea because I saw this article this week. Uh, this is in major newspapers all around the world that humans had sex with non-humans. There is now scientific evidence supporting this. So I assume you're no longer considered kind of that crazy guy in, in your golf <laughs> foursome uh, now that this has come out. I, I read it and I was like, L.A. Marzulli needs to know about this. And I went to your blog and you'd already posted a big article and commentary about it. So tell people what this is all about, because this is like this is no longer just a story from the Bible or science fiction or somebody's imagination. This is real stuff here. In my opinion, what we're looking at is the beginning. Well, it's more soft disclosure. And you know they're not telling us where this unknown DNA that we mixed with came from. That's phase two. So phase one is to try to tell us that somehow, you know, human beings were mating with um, entities which weren't human, which we all know, based on the biblical Genesis 6 prophetic narrative, that that's what happened. Fallen angels came down. They had sex with the women. Um, the offspring of that unholy union was the Nephilim. Um, one of the byproducts of that was giantism, but not always. And that's where some race churches, in my opinion, go off the rails. They assume that, that all the Nephilim back then were giants. They may have been giants. A lot of them were, but not all of them. And what we see is I think there's different genetic characteristics of the Nephilim. For instance, one of the tribes is called the Anakim, which means long necks. So is that the reason why they're called the Anakim? Because, you know, their neck was greatly elongated. They had extra vertebrae. We really don't know. But my research with the Paraka skulls, which is ongoing, by the way, um, the foramen magnum, and I'm going to use a show and tell here because I'm actually videoing this. But the foramen magnum on the on the Paraka skulls is basically all the way to the rear of the skull. In other words, a normal foramen magnum would be in the center. My my foramen magnum is basically in the center of my skull, and that that's why I'm balanced. But these are all the way to the back of the skull. So far back at it, in some of them that we've witnessed, Jim, if it's any further back, it's outside the skull. And that mm -hmm. means that perhaps the neck, the, the morphological uh, structure attributes of these particular skulls was completely different than human beings. We don't know that yet. We've never been able to find a fully intact mummy with an elongated skull. We know of one. We know where one is. But we don't have access to it, unfortunately. So now, meanwhile, now, more DNA testing is being done. Now, just to clear this up for those of us that are not science people here, how, how did they figure this out? A, what type of science was used? What type of tests were run where they're able to say, aha, th there is, uh, and does this mean that there is, like, do they have a corpse uh, of a hybrid or do they have someone living today that represents uh, a hybrid uh, DNA? H how do they get this? Well, in, in my opinion, I don't, that's all very murky. That's um, that's sort of held back. That information is held back, at least from what I've been able to uncover. We really don't know. Um, and, and what amazes me about stories like this, it, it goes out and people read them. And for the most part, people just, you know, what's for dinner? Nobody cares. Nobody cares. But, you know, for, from my perspective, this is, again, it's soft disclosure. Step one that we had sex with some unknown species, okay, which produced perhaps a hybrid. All right, that traces back to the biblical narrative of Genesis 6. I get that. The next step is where did these, what were these entities and where were they, where did they, did they come from? And that gets into the whole so-called extraterrestrial paradigm where we were seated here by these so-called extraterrestrials in the far distant past. They manipulated our genetics. They created modern man as we know him. They started the world's civilizations. Uh, they started the world's religions. And now, at this critical juncture, they, E.T., is back to usher mankind into a golden age. Now, I've been saying that phrase, and that's why it's so well rehearsed, for, for years, literally. And I, I call it the coming great deception. Whether or not the church is here or not, I truly believe that 
when we go up, they show up. But that's another topic, perhaps for another time. In the meanwhile, where where this is called soft disclosure, where these stories are floated out and the masses kind of read them. People talk about it for about 10 minutes, turn the page and move on with their lives. But something is going on. There is truly a hidden history that is all over this planet. I'll just give you one example, Jim. We had I had I found a what I would call an out of place artifact. And this is an exclusive on your show. I haven't talked about it yet. And it was in a, a uh, uh, museum and I won't, uh, you know, tell you the museum because I don't want to embarrass the museum and I don't want to embarrass the people who are involved in this. But I, I have to I have to come out with it because people need to know the way the game is played. We found an artifact. It was a locust. It was made out of pure quartz. It was incredibly crafted. It was elegant. It was beautiful. And it was about three and a half to four inches long. And it had concentric rings around the tail. And the body was perfectly sculpted. And there were eyes and a face. I mean, it was just a beautiful artifact. Problem is, it's quartz, number one. Number two, it comes from a burial ground. And I won't tell you that because I don't want to give it away. But it came from a burial ground, an Indian mound. So we, we work with two archaeologists here at Spiral of Life, Mondo Gonzalez and Rick Woodward. Rick Woodward took this one. He filled out the paperwork because he's an archaeologist. He actually teaches archaeology and anthropology uh, at the university level. And so he uh, filled out the appropriate paperwork seven or eight months ago. That's how long it took. Seven or eight months ago, and we were cleared Everybody signed off on it except one tribe. There were apparently two tribes which had jurisdiction over this one particular area. And bam, they put the kibosh on it. They put the kibosh on it saying that uh, we, we don't feel that the study of this will uh, you know, aid a Native American uh, tradition. And in fact, it may actually disparage uh, Native Americans uh, in, in the long run, something like that. And so... Basically, all we're doing is the science. We're not. We're going where the science leads us. We well, this guy, put- this guy here. I don't know if you it, going back to this, uh, th- this, uh, this scientist. His name is Omar Gokumen, and this guy is a big deal. He's he's at the University of Buffalo, and it says here that he is the faculty expert on human evolution and ancient humans. Now he's the one that came out with this report that fueled all of these news stories that ancient humans had sex with non-humans um this is not a guy who's you know working at uh the creation museum and or trying to working <laughs> with you or trying to spin some kind of story to support the bible uh this is just bizarre well and and, and the reason why i got long-winded on that one story was because there's a cover-up and they won't allow the information out. Everything is controlled. And that's what people need to understand, that the information that we get, this information that came out last week is being on some level controlled in some way, guaranteed. Some guy comes out with this. Why is he coming out with it now? You know, what what motivates him to do that? And yeah, you, know, you, you would think, it, you would the- think, I mean, what a crazy thing, I mean, to say from world standards, uh, and it seemed like you said nobody noticed this. It's like what? We had sex with non-humans. What? And nobody seemed to care about it. All right. So I'm going to set this up. So a hundred years ago, a hundred years ago, uh, three people were out, and they're they're out to taking care of their sheep, their shepherds. A hundred years ago, and they claimed to see some bizarre things in the sky that somehow they interpreted was the Virgin Mary and all of these lights and things that were happening. And now Catholics, um, mostly Catholics, I, I understand this is primarily a Catholic thing, by the thousands and thousands and thousands go to this little town in Portugal, uh, Fatima, Portugal. And uh, this, is a, this is an interesting thing. And I have Catholic friends that have gone to Portugal to go to this uh, area and L.A. Marzulli, you have a movie coming out about this. I, I forgot to ask you before we went live if it's okay to ask you about the movie. I know it's not officially out yet, but can you tell us a little bit about what's going to happen with this movie? Well, I can't. You know, the, the trailer is out. <clears throat> At least I should say the teaser is out. And uh, the trailer will come out this week. 
Um, we just returned from Portugal about eight, nine days ago. Uh, we were there for two weeks. We had incredible interviews with some of the most amazing <clears throat> researchers, scholars. Uh, we talked to a neuroscientist. We talked to an anthropologist. We talked to uh, Joaquim Fernandez, who in some ways with Fina de Armada broke this story literally decades ago. Uh, what we discovered there was not only alarming, but it seems like the original records from 1917, and those are the original, you got to go back to the original documents. The later documents are, tell a completely different story. The documents in the 30s and the 40s, completely different story. 1917 is when all this happened. And those are the documents, 1917, 1919, those are the documents that people need to go to, researchers need to go to and look at. And one thing I, there's actually a caveat in the film, in the very beginning of the film, which, which I hadn't intended on doing until I stood in Fatima. And Fatima is the actual sanctuary. Um, and it's become this incredible tourist attraction uh, for pilgrims. And I get that. And that sanctuary can hold up to a million people at the same time. Wow. So there's, there's a, yeah, it's incredible. There's a disclaimer in the beginning of the film. And the reason why I did this, we were there on July 13th, which is one of the anniversaries of the so-called apparition. And they were parading this four foot high statue um, of a representation of the Mary of the Bible, the queen of heaven with a crown on this bed of roses being, you know, held up by, by people, pallbearers essentially. And, Thousands of people were waving handkerchiefs um, at this image. And, and the choir was going. It's, it's a whole production. I mean, it's amazing. It's a whole production. And I looked at that and I said, there's no way we can go and attack this. And that's not what we're about. That's not what I want to do. So but disclaimer in the beginning of the film, say millions of people come to Fatima each year and, and, and believe it's the Mary of the Bible. Then I pause and say, Millions of people gather around the Kaaba stone in Mecca. Millions of Hindus celebrate Guru Puja. Millions of Buddhists have temples and worship Buddha. People have the right to believe whatever they want to believe. And we're not here to disparage anyone's belief system. What we are here to do is look at the events that happened on October 13th, 1917, in my opinion, erroneous, erroneously named the miracle of the sun. That was penned by a, a reporter who had no idea what to call it, so he just called it the miracle of the sun. So we sat down with a neuroscience scientist. We sat down with anthropologists, philosophers, researchers. I mean, these are really highly educated people who look at the documents from 1917 and. I am being as fair as I possibly can be. And already I'm getting flack from both sides of the aisle. I get Catholic people who are calling me all sorts of nasty names. I get evangelicals, um, you know, saying that I shouldn't be doing this, that, uh, you know, it's like my, my research is flawed. No one's seen the film yet because the film is just is now being edited. And I spent all week long creating the skeletal structure of the film. I am trying to be as fair as possible with the presentation. But I went there with my research. In other words, I just didn't go in there blind. I had read Fina de Armada's and Joaquin Fernandez's book, Heavenly Lights. And that book, which I wrote about in Politics, Prophecy, and the Supernatural, um, about Fatima, and Chris Putman and Tom Horn took that information and republished it in their book, Exo Vaticana. So that's been around for a while. I mean, I've been doing researching Fatima for well over a decade. And so it was nothing new to me, and I hadn't intended on doing this, but I felt the Holy Spirit go Fatima and wanted this out. So we went there, and what we discovered was Fatima is very, very complex. It's extremely complex. Jim, we have so much footage, we probably have three episodes in, in the series. There'll be one hour each. Um, the, first, the first part of the film definitely deals with the miracle of the sun. We have reports from eyewitnesses. This is, this is a quote that state, this is verbatim from a 1917 testimony from a lawyer who wrote this with his own hand. All right. I looked up and saw a dull silver disc. That's what he describes it as. It's not the sun. 
We all know that astronomically the sun didn't go anywhere. We know that. That if the sun came to Earth, it would, it would burn everybody up. So something happened at Fatima. And the question is, in my opinion, we need to step back from all of our preconceived notions, myself included, and go where the facts and the evidence take us. And this is why the film is called, the first installment of the, of the series is called Fatima, Miracle of the Bible or a Harbinger of Deception. In my opinion, and I'll, I'll, spill, my, I'll spill the beans now, in my opinion, all the evidence that we've gathered, and, and it goes really, really deep. It was a harbinger of deception. And I realize that's going to, you know, rain on people's parade. I understand that. But do people want truth or do they want fantasy? And yeah, and this, the this, evidence. yeah, this whole idea, too, of uh, what the Catholic Church has done with the Virgin Mary turning her into an equal almost with the Trinity. Uh, I don't know where that comes from to begin with, but uh, there's some other bizarre things. I don't know if you get into this in the video, but supposedly some secrets were shared with these children, uh, prophecies, uh, things about World War II, even the end of the world and, and, and other world wars. Uh, all, any or all of that come up in the video? We, we completely stayed away from all that. We, we stayed away from looking at um, the, the secrets, I mean, I deliberately, at least for now, stayed away from all that. And, and the reason for this, age is that we realized that all of the secrets came much, much later. you got to go back to 1917. What are the yeah, witnesses? As you said, it's like the story kind of took on a life of its own after the Evolved. actual event.